Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Adam. And I'm Felix. And we are talking about the journey from never before being on stage to a full show. Felix says, if you haven't already watched it, he has put up his silk to egg practice video. That is where he does his research, practices it, and you watch every bit of that. Then at the end of that video is his performance to camera with his beautiful wife, Julia, behind the camera. What we're going to do now is watch that performance together. I've taken some notes and we're going to watch it in real time where I'll just be pausing it and giving him the notes and feedback that I've, I've gotten from watching it. Okay. Um, right. Uh, beforehand, we, Adam and I agreed that he is going to be brutally honest. I'm really trying to, to, do, to get this properly and to learn here. And the only way to, to improve yourself is that you get honest feedback from a professional. Um, I know this is the first time I performed this trick and I know there's tons of, uh, tons of things to improve. So I'm not going to feel bad about it. Just give it to me straight. And again, when you're, when you're working with your team and your, your circle of trusted friends, you need the person that first and foremost, you can respect their opinion. Maybe they're doing what you want to be doing, but also somebody that isn't going to be a yes man or a yes woman, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want somebody telling you you're great if you're mediocre, because then you end up like the people on America's Got Talent. And, uh, you know, you watch them and go, has no one in their entire life told them they can't sing? So it really isn't about being brutally or brutal or mean. It's just about things that are glaring to one person that might not be to another. And this is a practice session, right? It's yeah. not as if he got paid to go perform for his wife. So this is where we're, we're building it. So that's what we're going to watch today. We're going to dive into the video. I'm going to be pausing um, as I have the notes and just sort of we'll watch it together. I'll pause it and say, this is what I'm talking about. Update that, update this. And hopefully the next video you see will be Felix taking that feedback, applying what works for him. Now, all of my feedback is not going to be things that he wants to implement. Now, as you're being critiqued by people, you have to trust their opinion, but you also have to realize not every one of their opinions will be right for you. So you'll just see that process. And the next video you'll see is Felix with an updated performance that utilize the notes we're about to take. You ready to dive in? I am. That's good. All right. And this is the full performance. So as I said, I'm going to continually be pausing it, but we're going to dive right in and we'll go off the notes as they come up. Make sure the volume's up so we can all hear. And here we go. So, all right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I know you're busy you are with our little baby daughter and I highly appreciate what you're doing every day. Wouldn't you agree that magic is a wonderful thing? Absolutely, right. A famous magician, Pop Hayden, once said that magic is the second oldest profession. And that the biggest difficulty is that both professions are being ruined nowadays by amateurs. Quick note, uh, watching this over, it's assumed that people get that joke, but the problem is uh, that there's not enough reference for people to understand. I know what you're saying, that the first, the first profession was prostitution, right? And the joke is, well, being ruined by amateurs. But there's two things just to consider. First and foremost, I think the joke has to be set up a bit more to realize a lot of people won't know that. And secondly, is that a joke that you want to be in your opening 30 seconds? So <laughs> just... You, I'm just saying, consider that you're making a joke about a prostitute in the first 30 seconds and you're doing yeah. it directly after you've said, thank you, I love you to your wife. So it's a little <laughs> bit of a... That, exactly. That's why my next line is going to be, I really don't know why I told you this joke because you're clearly not the right audience for that. But yeah, realize that during the performance. Perfect. <laughs> we'll keep rolling. Um... And in retrospect, I don't know why I'm telling you this joke because you're clearly the wrong audience. So get the shit right, Felix. All right, moving on. Magicians have gained over the time some kind of a reputation in a way that they never explain how an effect is performed. But since I thought, since we're married and I love you more than anything else in this world, I thought it would be much, much more fun. So that move right there looks a little suspect to me. Um, I, I know what we're trying to do. We're trying to establish that it's just a silk going into the hand, but you do it a few too many times to where it's drawing unnecessary attention to it, right? Um, okay. So I'll go back. That first one looks like it could be okay, but what I would suggest you did is just put a silk in your hand for real 
and move it from one hand to the other and see how different that looks than what this looks like. And then as we continue watching, notice that you do it, um, you do it more times than, than needed, right? I would do that once, maybe twice to get back to the other hand, but anything yeah. over than that, because it's such a, a non, non natural way, right? If I'm putting a silk in my hand, I would have to kind of grab it this way. It just, it threw my, my warning flag up. So uh, watch through it and tell me if it feels unnatural to you as you watch it. That instead of trying to trick you and deceive you, that I teach you step by step how one of those ancient miracles yeah, is being great. performed. Do you want to learn a magic trick? Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to show it to you. And after that, I'm going to teach it to you step by step. All right. So it's the it's the opening of the hand. It's it's like you're you're doing it very well, and there's nothing that's flashing, but it looks as if you're trying to make it very clear that your hand is empty so yeah. many times that now I'm going. Well, why is he trying to show me that his hand's empty? So your your uh, suggestion would be reduce the number of times I'm doing it. Try to and do it more naturally by trying it with a silk without the prop in my hand, and, and to justify doing it. So if if you're yeah. over. It, it could be as simple as this. I started in this hand as I'm addressing an audience member here. Obviously, it's just Julia at the camera, but we're practicing, right? So I'm talking to this side of the audience, and now I want to address this side of the audience, which justifies me having to go over here to address. So even a gesture, if I'm poking it in here, but I want to gesture to this group over here, my head is going to go, oh, blah, blah, blah. So now there's a reason I've switched my hand, and now I can put it in as I'm talking to them, Oh, I want to address them again, so I'll come back to you. And just those once or twice will will logically make sense as long as there's a reason for me doing that, right? Okay. Oh, I want to come over to here instead of just this this over sort of proving of it makes me go. That's weird. Why is his hands going like that? So the first step I would do is to just do it, put a silk in my hand, and then go. Oh, I need to talk to these guys. So let me switch it over here so I can talk to you. Push it in more. Mm -hmm. Shit. Now I got to talk to them again. And just see what that actually looks like. And then try, try your best to mimic that exact motion. Okay. There's another thing which, which uh, becomes obvious to me. The way I hold my hand. Um, Pop Hayden has in his teaching a very good tip, I think. He's like, when you, when you, hold, when you hold the prop, turn in the hand like this. Right? Like in this angle. So the hand would appear smaller. Because I hold it like this, right? And it telegraphs that uh, I have something in my hand instead of like this and then push the hand in and... So my advice again there would be put a silk in your hand. Get rid of yeah. the egg, put a silk in your hand, film it, and then do everything you can to get that exact same look. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go back here. This one is called the silk trick. Um, what you need is a red silk and you push it tightly into your fist, into a very tight ball. You do this very thoroughly and as soon as the silk is completely encapsulated by your fist, you prepare yourself for the magic word and the magic gesture, which is... Cringe. Abracadabra. Abracadabra? All right. Abra. So you say cringe. So as you're watching it back now, is that corny? So there's two, two trains of thought, right? You can be pretending to play a corny magician and almost yeah. making fun of, of this, which I know is what you're trying to do, but you have to emphasize that that's what you're trying to do. So there's no question, right? So yeah. I want to know as the audience, hey, you might've seen a lot of magicians give these weird sort of things. Like, I need to know that's you saying, I get, I get it. This is weird and goofy, right? Um, so yeah, just I emphasizing. Mean, I, I, love, I, love to, uh, I love to have fun, right? In, in, in a way that I'm not, I'm not cringing about the fact that I'm over-exaggerating. Uh, what, 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 what I don't feel in this performance is the pacing, but I think this is something we should talk about afterwards. Yep. I think the whole, the, whole, um, the whole pacing of my performance we, is weird to me watching it uh, watching it right now obviously i only had 
three to four hours of practicing of the effect. And this was the first time because we, we, we recorded it for the first time. This was the deal. Yep. But to get things smoother and, and faster, this, this is what I'm missing at the moment the most. And that 100% will come from you doing this 10 to 15 times, right? You've yeah. ironed it out. You've, you've got your notes. The, the reason we film the very first performance and then critique it is so you don't practice 15 times with bad habits. So we can yeah. look, okay, cool. Here are the glaring bad habits that I that are popping into my mind. Now you practice five with those notes taken and addressed, and then we look at it again. And then you mm -hmm. practice when it's all ironed out five, 10, 15 more times. And that's where that fluidity of speech and, and um, uh, yeah economy of motion will all come into play, right? This It's all about avoiding muscle memory at this point. And and not having to think as you do and right, but that again only comes from doing it over and over. So this is they this is the long game of practicing, right? This is the way in a perfect world you would do it. You'd film your first, you'd have someone help you critique, you'd film a few more with those notes taken, critique that. And once you're really positive it's ironed out, then you perform it 10, 15 times to get everything fluid. And now you start introducing some other aspects of it, which we'll get to as we get to that point. So um, again, anyone who's watching, just keep in mind, this is literally the first time Felix went from start to finish with the routine. Um, and I we made it a point that that was filmed, right? That's a ballsy thing to do. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I'm never gonna, even my YouTube videos that I post, there's usually 15 takes before I'm happy with what it looks like. So, um, you know, the vulnerability to do that, especially to the the general public, um, I commend you for. But but, if but you're they're watching, only nice people on the internet, I assume, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's not like there are people that write nasty comments for no reason whatsoever. That wouldn't happen on YouTube. So no, that, that's a that's a different place. Not not that's YouTube right. or the internet. Yeah. Right. Right. All right, we're going along. Kadabra. And in this moment, the silk disappears and turns into an egg. So that's a good moment. You pause at a nice beat there, right? There was the corny joke, abracadabra. And then you relaxed and went, and in this moment, the only note here, which is probably overthinking it, make it very clear there's nothing else. You dropped your hand pretty quickly. So I would, boom, give that moment and then go in the silk. After you pause and let that, that was a great pause there, has turned to an egg. And show this hand empty as I show the egg. Okay. So if, you, if we rewatch this, it'll look, it's not terrible, but I think it's a prettier framed piece because that's the first moment something magical happens for them. So you're here. I would even almost suggest rolling the sleeve up a bit. Just okay. so wherever their head may be going is that it's, there's a silk in this guy's hand. And then from there, it's turned to an egg, right? And there's nothing else in my hand. And mm -hmm. just let so, that moment sink in. So let's use this battery for, for a second. And so we go for, and then and the silk turns into an egg, show the hand empty. Would you roll up your sleeve beforehand or so after I usually, the reveal? I usually do it as it's going in about halfway. Yeah, in your performance, you said uh, you want to prove I, to your father that's, that it's not going up the yep. sleeve. Or sometimes up. people think it goes up the sleeve. I want to make very certain that you know it's not. Just yeah. something to lead them off that. You might not do that at the first. You might do it in the second phase where you're teaching them the magic. But mm -hmm. I like to do it in the first phase because the moment they see the egg is the first moment of magic. And it is fooling to people, right? That that's a You can get people to gasp at that moment. So really emphasizing there's no more silk and now it's just an egg, I think can be a little cleaner. Okay, cool. Oops, hold on. Then the silk travels over there we'll thoroughly. More. And as soon as the silk is completely encapsulated by your fist, you prepare yourself for the magic word and the magic gesture, which is? Abracadabra. Abracadabra? All right. Abra. Cadabra. And in this moment, the silk disappears and turns into an egg. Then the silk travels over there inside of my pocket, where it stays. And that's the trick.
Okay, one more note here. Uh, that was great. Uh, when you do this a bunch of times, you'll streamline the wording there so it sounds more fluid. But as you do that, there's this weird moment, right? Right here. And in this moment, the silk disappears and turns into an egg. Then the silk travels over there inside of my pocket, where it stays. And You're going to get an applause here, right? So as we practice, we want to make sure we're practicing for what normally will happen, which is that you're going to have to wait so they can applause. You're in an applause queue right here. The effect is done. Here's the egg. Here's the silk. Thank you very much. That's the trick. Let them know they're supposed to applaud there. And as we get deeper into practice, if you've, okay. if you've got Julia there to help, then that's when she'll hit a little cue and a laugh track will come on. Because when you're really practicing having a laugh track there, even one that maybe you can cue yourself is a nice way to feel what it's really going to feel like. So you've done it. Here's the egg. The silk actually goes to the pocket. And that's the trick. Thank you. And now you're going to pause and let people clap as you look around. There's going to be these awkward silences in here, and that's that's what those are, right? They're, they're the lack of an audience there to get the energy that you'd normally feel. So just know that when you're practicing it, that's going to feel weird, right? Those moments are going to feel offbeat. It's a little more effort to get someone to help you to hit a laugh track every time there's supposed to be a laugh line or to answer your question. What's the magic word? Abracadabra? All right, great. So just know if you don't have that, then you're going to get these weird, awkward, silent moments. And you have to know at this point in my script, I want an applause cue here. So as I'm practicing, I'm going to go here and I'm going to, in my head, thank people as they applaud, then move into the next yeah. phase. What's, ever, what's the average duration of an applause? It's very, very hard to say, right? But I know you are awesome. So people are going wild all the time, but... Um... No, I mean, honestly, just... <laughs> Look up applause uh, laugh track or applause yeah. track and then get one good laugh track, one good applause track that you can just have on a switch. So at yeah. this moment, Julia would know, all right, that's where, he, that's where they're going to clap. And if she just hits it, call it four or five seconds, right? Mm -hmm. Then it gives you the minute to take the beat. If there's a joke and there's no laugh when you're practicing, that throws it off. So same thing. Just get a, a standard laugh track off YouTube and a standard applause track off YouTube and go yeah. for that three to five seconds, just so you get the timing. So while you're practicing, you're not missing. You know, if you practice this 15 times with nobody applause, uh, no applause there, your first time for a real audience, it will throw you off because you'll go boom and they'll start clapping, but you'll be into the next part of your yeah. script and throws things off. So I've played around mostly with this idea of laugh tracks and, and uh, applause cues with the virtual shows that I've been doing because it's really easy. I'm sitting here and I've got my switcher right here. But if you've got mm -hmm. someone that can help you develop your show, like Julia is very kind to help with Felix's, he can just say, hey, honey, you've seen it. Let's watch it one more time. And then mm -hmm. you're going to have two buttons on the computer and you'll hit this one if it's a place where they applaud and this one if it's a place where they clap. And that really will help to start getting the flow and the timing of the show down. Um, You know, the first couple times I, I realized there were funny lines in routines that I were, was working on. It's a really weird thing because there's always in my stand up show, there's always a spot where I have a place that I can put a new trick in and I'll tell them, hey, it's a new trick. Do you mind seeing it? And I get to work the material out, but you never know what's funny and what's not. So those real live performances, having to stop what you're doing to allow them to laugh and then take the mental note. Oh, that's a laugh line. It's really great if you can rehearse that beforehand, right? It's more challenging mm -hmm. if you need someone to help you. But if you can do so, it really does help with the, the flow of, of how you practice. All right. All right. Moving on. And that's the trick. All right. So since I told you I'm going to show it to you and then I'm going to teach it to you, this is now the teaching part. Well, with the most magic tricks, when you know the method, the trick is kind of dumb. And this is no exception at all, right? Um, the magician uses two handkerchiefs. Just a note, don't use the word method, use the word secret. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you thought it's going to be something clever, right? No, the second handkerchief most magic okay. tricks. When you know the method, the trick is kind of dumb. And this is no exception at all, right? Um, the magician uses two handkerchiefs. <laughs> so the, 
what we're doing here is giving them the secret, right? So um, like all, like most things in life, once you know the secret, it's really pretty dumb. This one's no different. All you need for this trick to work is the first thing that they should be surprised is that you have a fake egg, right? Um, so instead of saying the magician uses two silks, the first line should be what makes this work is you get yourself one of these. And now you pull the silk out of the egg and say it's a fake egg, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got it a little bit reversed. You're saying two silks before showing the fake egg. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Cool. And now you've got the line which is coming up where you can show fake egg. Ha ha ha. If you want, you can use that decoy duck line, which is really funny. You can yeah. say it's a wooden egg with a hole in it. These are laid by decoy ducks. Ha ha ha. There's also some other funny lines I used to play with. I used to tell them, oh, these are really easy to make. All you have to do is get yourself a jar, a little mason jar. You get yourself an egg. You're gonna put that egg inside of the jar and fill it halfway with vinegar and halfway with water. Seal it really tight, put it in the windowsill and leave it for two weeks, at least two weeks. When you come back and open it up, you'll have a disgusting, smelly mess. You put that aside and go to the hobby store and get one of these wooden eggs. So it's depending on the situation, usually if I need to fill more time, I'll add that kind of thing. But the, the joke is, this is how it's done. You need a fake, here's the fake egg. Oh, and you also need two silks. One pro tip, make sure they're the same color, right? So now we get the surprise and then the silk joke after. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm so sorry. You thought it's gonna be something clever, right? No, the second handkerchief is inside of the actual. How else, right? Yeah, I know. Um, the first pro tip, and you probably want to write this down, use two handkerchiefs the same color. I don't That's funny. I like that and I'll probably put that in too. Um, so one pro tip, you wanna make, sh and you know what, you'll probably wanna write this one down. I like that. Instead of just one pro tip, make sure they're the same color. I like the idea of, you know what, the one, people who are paying attention are really trying to learn this, you'll probably wanna write this one down. Make sure your silks are the same color and do it with a smile so they know. I, I like that, that's a good, a good little beat to put in there. I mean, uh, Paul Payne has a, has a good line in there too, like all of his lines, but he says when, when people are laughing about what he's, um, what he's saying in his explanation, he's like, yeah, you guys are laughing, but there's people here trying to learn. <laughs> That's great too. That's great too. I have one bit, which is just a joke thing behind the back. And as I do it, I go, yeah, you laugh, but I know one, of you, one or two of you is going to go home and try it. Yeah. And it's the same, you know, that, that playful line is a really good spot, especially in this routine for it. So just getting that timing of showing the egg, then the two silks, pro tip, and the ones paying attention will want to write this down, make sure they're both red. That's a really nice, elegant sort of uh, lead in to what's next. As it takes away from the illusion. So you need two silks and you need one of these. This is a fake egg with a hole inside. Its insides have been removed. This is also very important because you would mess up your scar. One nice bit there is when you're showing it's a fake egg, um, put your finger in it and hold it on your finger so they can see that there's depth to it. Because the next time they see that is just gonna be with the sticker on it. And mm -hmm. you want to see the scene that they know that that's really a, a hollow egg. So I always just stick it right on my finger and sort of show it around to the audience. Okay, great. So you leave a hole inside the eggshell approximately the size of your thumb. Perfect. At the very beginning, you store one handkerchief in a tight ball in the inside of your jacket pocket. This is very important because nobody knows that there is a second handkerchief involved. This gives you an element of surprise. Also, since nobody is expecting an empty shell, this gives you a second <coughs> element of surprise. So what you do next is you poke the handkerchief inside of the empty eggshell and you get prepared for the magic gesture as well as the magic word. So you put it in tightly. You breathe, you get ready. You Play on that more, right? Be more playful with that. Because it is, it is a good callback to the beginning. But even a smile to the audience, right? Just even a smirk of like, I get it, I know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Once again, quoting Paul Payton, he has 
I don't know when. I think it was in a show from 2020. Uh, it was a bit aged there, but um, he was on stage and he gets ready and he's like, he's, he's wearing a Sims on a bit, right? He was Sims on a bit. And he raises his hand, people in the audience start laughing and they <laughs> stop laughing at the hardest part. <laughs> but that <laughs> little, right, that little audience. added, that little bonus line lets them know, oh, he's in on the joke too. We're not yeah. laughing at him, we're laughing with him, right? Yeah. And it, it could be just a smile, even just a smirk of the audience of like, like when I do it, I stamp my foot and I make a really stupid look on my face. It's over the top because I don't want people to think I'm taking myself that serious. Yeah. Cool. Say, abracadabra, wave your hand, drop the egg and pull the second handkerchief out of your pocket. Let's watch that again. Tell me if you see anything you don't like in this. You breathe, you get ready. You say, abracadabra, wave your hand, drop the egg and pull the second handkerchief yeah. out of your pocket. What, what bugs me is that my fingers cover the egg completely. And I guess you're talking about something different, but when you, when you look at the hand where, where, the, where, hold, the, where hold the egg, you breathe, the you get ready. See. You say, abracadabra, wave your hand. So you do a different method than I do. You're, you're loading the silk into the egg, um, into the hollow egg, and then palming the hollow egg off. So I've got the fake egg. Boom, fake egg, silk comes to the pocket, okay? Now, here's the setup of this routine. Your fake egg goes in your left pocket, but I've got the real egg in here too, okay? One silk goes in the right pocket, and another silk goes in play. Now when you take the fake egg out, and now I take the real egg out. So the fake egg is gone. I don't have to palm two eggs at the same time. And all I do is tuck the silk in between the egg and my fist mm -hmm. into a little container. So the moment I, I show the egg, I get another laugh line because I know the real silk's in here, but I go to the wrong pocket. And that's to get rid of this, right? When Lance yeah. Burton does it, he tucks it in and Lance Burton goes like this and it's just concealed here, right? Mm -hmm. But because you're putting it in the fake egg, you've now got to steal that fake egg, show the real egg, and then go to the pocket with a fake egg to come out with a silk. And because of that, you're going really quick. So you're doing everything slow and elegant until the moment you say, wave my hand over it, and then the silk's in here. In all mm -hmm. honesty, you have done anything in the world at that point, right? And the, the audience may remember that as, he did something really quick when he had the egg. As opposed to, it goes in, I hold it this way, so they see an egg and the silk behind it. And it's a really good illusion of it still being a fake egg with the silk going in. Uh -huh. Then I come here, squeeze it really small, and immediately show the egg where this is now just palmed here. And I say, the silk turns to the egg and goes into your pocket. Now I ditch that silk and I get a laugh line and go, oops, wrong pocket. Another pro tip. You want to practice the trick once or twice, and then I pull the silk out, okay? Uh -huh. I'm not saying that's the right way if you like doing it by putting it in the fake egg and then stealing that off, but you do need to figure out how you can do that and cleanly, without any fast movements, keep that continuity of the egg. What I like about coming out here is they see it, I tell them fake egg, here it is, fake egg goes in the pocket, great. Then I come back out with it palmed and show it to them. So they still think that's the same fake egg. There's a continuity there. And everything can be done very, very slow and show my hands empty every time. So when I stick mm -hmm. it in, I show it's turned to an egg. I go to the pocket. Oops, I'm an idiot. You should practice once or twice. I show my hand empty. That egg never leaves their sight. I come here with a silk. And now at the end, when I peel the sticker, it should feel to them like that egg, once they saw my finger in it, really never left their sight. And the next thing that happened was I cracked it as a real egg. And drop the egg and... You breathe, you get ready. You say, abracadabra, wave your hand, drop the egg and... So, you know, we just discussed this, but that has to be cleaned up. Everything's slow and elegant. And, and in their face until the moment of the switch. And it just looks like you speed up 
unnecessarily, um, which is going to mm-hmm. arouse suspicion. So to, to me, I handle this differently. Um, this is more the Pop Hayden handling. But if that's the route you'll go, then again, that, that moment just needs to be cleaned so it, it yeah. doesn't look fast and suspicious. Ah. You, you know what? You get ready. Both, both ways of doing it. Do it in the recording a couple of times and then, then decide. I, I don't know if I can clean it up and it's just me because I'm yeah, not used to doing that. But um, yeah, let's see how it goes. You say, abracadabra, wave your hand, drop the egg and... Well, you know, one thing might even be just open your hand much, much more there, right? Because yeah. you're concealing too much of the egg. So maybe if the egg was at your fingertips there, then that would look more convincing. So play around with a, and, and see what handling feels best, but that there's too much cover right after you did the switch. So if that was at fingertips, so you can show it this way, maybe that cleans it up. Yeah, just oh, basically, I move the egg from the one hand to the other one and then basically just turn it up like this. Yeah, would probably, would probably help. So it's a, cool, yeah. yeah. Pull the second handkerchief out of your pocket. You get yourself a magic trick. That's all to it. <laughs> just the proper English just is, that's all there is to it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> all right. Um, since in life nothing is really perfect, this trick is no exception, right? The trick is flawed because when somebody is behind you, he will, have, he will have a drastically different experience than what are you having at this moment. You see? That's good. Um, so if there's someone behind you, they'll have a drastically different experience than the one that you're having at this moment. I think that's a good line. And as you say that, you can sort of turn it around and show the opening. This looks like a very convincing solution. This doesn't really. Right. So we will have a completely different experience. And from time to time, some wise guy from the audience will want to expect, inspect the egg. He wants to take a look at the hole and everything. And you can't show it to him because it would give him a, the method. Secret. Right. So what you do, and what you have to do before you can show it to them, is to follow it secretly. And I'm talking secretly. You peel off the hole and you hide the whole something very inconspicuous. So if the audience wants to inspect the egg, you're going to do the following, you're going to pretend to crack the egg, and then you can inspect it as long as they like. Great, great. A friend of mine gave me this note years after I'd been performing it. That, that ending was, was great. Um, the humor, the... the subtle wink type things, you know, that was perfect. Uh, you, you left the egg in full view when you went to get the cup. That's a big thing that uh, took me a while to learn. If I'm reaching for the cup, I want this egg right here and this hand is empty going to the cup. And then there's one thing you can do uh, and is get a beat out of this moment, right? So when you can say, uh, if they want to expect it, then you pretend to crack the egg. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> Well, if you really did, and then once you crack it, go really high up, right? Because that's a really cool moment. Crack, and then try and get that egg yolk to drop from up here, right? Mm-hmm. So they see it, unk, drop down, and then, then you drop the shell. You did what I used to always do, which was trying to keep everything clean. So you crack it here, and you, you sort of do this. Get dirty, right? I always have yeah. a tissue close-up case, and now I go, kung, and I try and get that as big as I can so they see it. And then I hold it to the audience as I go around. But that mm-hmm. was great. Uh, the only thing there is to make sure you're not doing this too too tight okay. in here. Crack it. And a tip on that is you're going to crack it. But then as I go up, I use my middle finger to really break the egg. So I crack it here. And then I take my middle finger here and break it and split it when it's up here. And then you get a really nice image of the yolk hitting it. Cool. I'll practice that. And then let's and just I'm look at you. Very proud to say that no eggs have been wasted during this performance. I always end with, because uh, I get dirty, 
So I take the tissue out and I always end with, don't worry, that's the dirtiest trick I do. And then I throw the tissue. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I just want to look at one final thing here. And crack the egg. And then you can inspect it as long as they like. Thank you very much. And this brings us to the end. Okay, so final note on the very end, which is an important part of the routine. Always look for the applause cues, right? So in every action you can think of, I'm guiding the audience to let them know it's time to clap. So crack, boom, drop. And instead of just the cheers, it always helps to thank you very much, right? And you're just sort of putting both hands up. And now every time throughout the show, in the rope routine we're gonna learn, you end in a moment where your hands are up. In the confabulation, you're thanking the audience. So this is that mental cue, it's time to clap. And this is a really nice moment to do that. Crack, crack, boom, thank you. Earlier on in the silk to egg, when it changes, mm -hmm. it's now an egg and the silk is in my pocket. Thank you very much. Same moment, right? Same, I'm right here. So if we can casually, not overdo it, but at the end of the routine, crack, Cheers, thank you very much. Just that subtle bit can aid in people knowing, okay, it's time to clap. And it also, it looks really nice as the conclusion of one thing moving into the next. Well, hey dude, I mean, like I said, it, it, takes, it takes balls to, you know, put a first performance out there to be critiqued like this. So um, anyone watching, the real goal is that you take something from it. I've learned something today that I probably need to script the ending of my, my Silk to Egg. Um, Felix learned a bunch and the, the goal is that you, you took something from it as well. So, uh, leave us some comments, let us know that you're there and, and that you're watching. And, uh, this is just the start. We have some, some really great stuff planned. And by the end of this journey, we're all going to watch Felix stand on stage and kill it for 35 minutes with a thoroughly entertaining and well thought out performance. So thanks for being here. Thanks for coming along for the journey. And Felix, thanks for taking the, uh, um, building up the nerves to put it out there. I think it's going to help not just us, but anyone who watches.